Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the most magical podcast in the Midwest, the Magic in the Midwest podcast, starring USA Today bestselling author J.B. Michaels and his more successful wife, Ashley Michaels, and now your host. Oh, wow. Thanks. Thanks so much, announcer. Um, I really appreciate you and all you do for us. So I really... You are a very special, special person. The announcer is pretty cute. <clears throat> yeah, th- he is. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is the Magic in the Midwest podcast. This is 59th Magic in the Midwest podcast. 59. Wow. Yes. Holy content. Holy cow. Holy content. Is that the year your mother was born? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so that everyone knows now. Yep. Yep, not that she listens, so it doesn't even matter. Um, she does sometimes. No, no, no one supports you. It's fine. It's nobody, no one cares. I think we need to, <laughs> someone has a little bit of an edge today. I'm kidding. That's funny. Um, so, um, yes, so we have the um, Magic in the Midwest podcast Ladies and gentlemen, we do this podcast um, every week, and we also have a special program set up um, where you can uh, subscribe, magicinthemidwestpodcast.bandcamp.com. For as little as $3 a month, you uh, gain access to lots of other exclusive content that um, we also record those mm-hmm. are fun a little more loose a little more ridiculous a little more um well i mean not probably not more ridiculous than normal but it they're fun they're very fun mm-hmm. um so check those out also geez i mean we, we have a lot of sponsors i also write books i've got 14 of them cozy mysteries action adventures thrillers uh award winning multi award winning you know collection of my books so check out jb michaels on amazon barnes and noble um anywhere books are sold yeah there's a few different series too so there's there's really something for everyone so you should check them out yes yes um so please check that out you know i should start just putting a link why did not the show notes yeah i'll put links in the show notes to to uh you know where you could check them out um all right also, ladies and gentlemen, we um, we also do. We're also on every podcast platform. One thing we really could use is, you know, your help in in some ways, uh, like in regards to sharing the podcast. If you really enjoy the content, um, you know, we we like to give something positive to the world. We think that you know it's funny and it's a good time. So if you could share. Um, the podcast with your friends, your family, uh, fellow Disney fans, groups. It's one of those weird things. Like if you're in a Facebook group, you can't self-promote yourself a lot of the time. Unless it's one of those specific ones, which are stupid. Which then no one else is. Everyone's yeah, no one else cares. They, they're there yeah. to self-promote. So if you are part of like a Disney Parks group, <clears throat> gosh, would it be wonderful if you guys said, hey, these two are hilarious and they love Disney <laughs> Which Assuming that all are, that no, is true. that is definitely true. <laughs> so, you know, if you love the podcast, share it with other people. Share the love. We really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who subscribes and listens. And who has shared and, in the past. And has shared in the past. And also has rated the podcast on Apple Podcasts. That also is big. We're I think we're up to like 11 ratings. At Something this like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and after over a year of doing it, you know, we want to try. We're going to really try our efforts in the next year to really try and bump um, our footprint. You know, so because yeah. we feel like we have a lot of content now, we right. have social proof that you know we're not just going to be, you know, a podcast that kind of just dies out, and then you're like looking for your podcast fix, and it's not there, and you're like, what is happening? Um, so, you know. Definitely that. Also, Ash, uh, we have met lots of great people through the podcast, one of which is? Uh, Emily, if you are interested in planning something, a trip to Universal or Disney, um, she is someone that you should 
contact. She is a vacation planner, but she specializes in Disney and Universal. Uh, but she could, like I said, she can book all travel, including cruises. Although I don't think many cruises are booked out just quite yet but keep that in mind for the future um and she can help you with all the stuff the dining the fast passes and monitor for savings she can hook you up with airport transfers um and she can create a customized itinerary for you and your family she is wonderful she's very knowledgeable very sweet we really like her we met her through the podcast um and then if you do work with her you get a free no obligation quote and you can contact her via email at emily at magical mouse travel dot com yes so and then if you do um just let her know that we sent you over yeah em em, emily has has helped us in the past um and plus like okay this is good i'm just gonna just gonna do this all right so so (laughs) one thing i also really value and especially you know my other you know we we do a lot of things we 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 are people that work very hard and do different things for so Mm -hmm. um I'm also an insurance, um, so I'm also a producer, right? An account executive, whatever you want to say. Um, and we deal with people every day. And I'm telling you, there is nothing like dealing, you know, finding somebody that appreciates the golden rule, you know, uh, which is treat others, right? Kindly, yeah. you know, as if, you know, you know, I just feel like that's something that, that, gets lost um when we're we're behind our screens and we could just be mean to each other and emotionally react to things and just have negative energy you could if you want to you could just go down a wormhole of negative energy um uh, you know on your phone on any platform that you know does help a lot of things but also does a lot of harm as well um and one thing is refreshing is finding good people emily is a good is good people she is um you know Matt, who we just did the special edition podcast interview with. He's good people. Side note, real you quick: know, if you have not listened to that, it's a great, quick podcast yes. to listen to. It's like twenty minutes, and it's just great. So yeah, it's really, listen. it's really fun. It's really good. Um, and that's, and it, you know, that's something that we are going to continue to do. We've got another person lined up uh, to do another special edition number two podcast, um, and it's just something like you know, you need, you gotta. You got to find quality people, and I just feel like that's a really important thing. Um, I 100% agree, and I, I think that, you know, we all have our moments for sure, right? But it's about what you do most of the time. And right. It, and, you know, what you put out there matters. It does. You know, it does. And we kind of had an experience like that over the weekend. But, it you know, it matters the kind of energy you're putting out there, and that will attract the people that are attracted to you, you know? So just... Good people. Yeah. Good vibes, good people. Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, on that note, you know, we just we just want to say we appreciate all the, you know, everybody and we, you know, you guys listening and, um, you know, we hope that we could help help your your week and your day, you know, either when, if you're listening while you're commuting to work or you're listening at home while you're doing stuff at home or working from home, whatever it may be. Hiding we've, from your kids upstairs. Yeah, we've all been through a lot. <laughs> as a world Mm -hmm. um and you know the past year and a half or so so um i just you know i just want to want to let everyone know that yeah and and um you know going off of what jb said earlier too is we always get the biggest bumps when someone shares something on social media or shares something in a group or with their friends we always can tell with the downloads we have and we get a lot of new listeners which is um really nice just because this is something that makes us happy this is us putting positive vibes out it's something we love talking about we look forward to it every single week and so um and we fortunately have great listen through you know people that listen to us yeah they they do listen to other ones um which is great most of the other ones you know if if you've done that before thank you and um yeah yeah all All right so on to the show uh so we are back at universal studios florida which we ash and i did an overview episode uh, a couple podcasts ago and the overview episode basically kind of touched upon the history of universal studios florida the universal studios florida that i loved um as a child um 
And now things are a little different mm-hmm. um, at Universal Studios Florida. It is... It's the original park in the Orlando, out of the two Orlando parks, soon to be three with Epic Universe coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it, it, you know, there's, there is, like, Ash asked me a couple of years ago. She was like, which one do you like better, Islands or, you know, Studios? And I, like, without missing a beat, said Studios. And, and then she asked me to kind of reflect it might have been on the podcast she asked me to reflect like why exactly it was when we were there right you're like why exactly around, yeah. do you like this better than islas and then that's where i kind of you know my tongue got sort of tied because i was like well oh. you were remembering the the studios that was yes right you know yes right yeah. so i was remembering jaws and kong confrontation and back to the future you know things that that i was closely tied to growing up mm-hmm. you know like and and you know going to the movie the movie house as harrison calls it um you know and just experiencing you know so it's it i think that has changed right so it's different now now it's still in a way it still adapts to the kids of today and what they like um too so now, what's cool about Universal Studios Florida is City Walk. Like the, the you know you basically go through City Walk, and then you um, you know hang a uh, a right, and then you go over, and then you see the globe. Right. Right. The, the you know the awesome spinning globe with the waterfall where the everyone water takes the it. pictures. Everybody takes the pictures there. You see the archways. Yeah. You know the famous hollywood archways um which are just i mean it's a whole row of arches really right and then it says universal studios florida and i mean that was i mean that that so like that particular area is iconic to me like i love the entrance to universal studios florida like i love it and the other reason i love it is they pipe in the music that plays when you're getting into the park and it's usually it's back to the future and then it's you know you just you get all these like that 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 john williams and alan silvestri like you know soundtracks big soundtracks of the the movies that made the place you know so like it, it that like really hooks me and I also love at Horror Nights, the entryway has the banners of all the different houses. Yes. Which is cool. Very cool. Yeah. You know, like different designs. And then there's oftentimes, like, if you've noticed, I don't know if you noticed the last time, like HHN in the Tribute Store, sometimes there's stuff that they create, like graphic design-wise, and like like those pumpkins that one year. Mm. Um, there's like designs up on the banners that really the only place they were found was up on the banners and then on a shirt in the tribute store. There is no like oh. house. Okay. You know what I mean? So sometimes yes. they have alternate okay, yeah, logos yeah. Yes. of that particular year. Which is cool. You know, yeah, which like I a, think is cool. Yeah, it's, like a, an original type right. thing. And yeah. sometimes you don't, that those are the only places you see that, that work is on the banners and... Right. You know, um, and then inside the tribute store on some shirt that's sort of random. I mean, that tribute store, like, I could spend a bajillion dollars in there with Horror Nights. At least. I mean, it's amazing. A bajillion. Yeah, a bajill. Uh, But anyway, we're not going to talk. We're not going to get into that. Even though the the tribute store is technically, like, really close to the first area um, of the park. So you walk in... um, it's it's nothing special. There's no there's and I think it was done purposely. It was supposed to be like this. There's no castle, right? Right. There's no um, spaceship Earth. There's no tree of life. Okay. It's, and you basically walk out into the and you're seeing the backside of like studios. You're in a studio lot. Right. As soon as you walk in, which, which is, is makes sense. Totally consistent with. You know what it, you know which I totally understand. 
Um, so it's called Production Central. That's where you first come in. Um, and this area used to be where the uh, Alfred Hitchcock presents. Okay. Um, like amphitheater was, like the whole experience was. The Lucy, there was a Lucy store, tribute store. Oh. That was there for years. What's and going now, on with your nose? I don't know. And now there's like, hello, kitty, lots of lots of blow, Ash. Lots of blow. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Yikes. Right, anyway, um, so the Lucy Tribute Store used to be there. Um, and now it's like, hello, kitty, or something. And then there was Starring Rolls Cafe which now is the Today Show Cafe, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then the Universal Studios store. Okay. Right when you walk in. Right. Yeah, those are all the things. Yes. Um, all right, so then you have uh, Production Central. Here you have the show Shrek 4D. Okay. Never seen it. You've never seen it? No. I think I've seen it once a long time ago. Now, here's how we're going to have to tackle this because a lot of this stuff, we both haven't seen, and a lot of this stuff, you I don't think you've seen any of it, to be honest. Great. Um, I'm a huge asset to today's you are, podcast. Yeah, but you are because there's other things we could talk about with it. Okay. Um, Shrek 4D. <clears throat> what do you think of just the Shrek franchise in general? I mean... Um, at this point now, I'm not crazy about it. When it first came out and I was younger and like thought I was a little bit edgier, I enjoyed it more. Than I okay. do now, but never a ton. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, you have to see Shrek. Shrek. It's so oh, great. There's like six um, of those movies. You know what's yeah. odd to me is, I mean, it's been there for a long time. And out of all the things that could be there for a long time, it's Shrek. Okay. That's all I have to say. Yeah, about yeah. I, I, I never... Um, I don't think of it as that. I think of it as the house that Halloween 4 was in the first time I ever went to Halloween Halloween Nights. Nights, And yes. it just occupies a space that they probably won't change unless it's necessary like i'm pretty sure they do with all of studios right <laughs> yes we'll talk most, about that most of studios like... but yeah i mean i i this would not be something that i'd be like i need to see this yeah i don't have any there are some things like rip ride rocket i'll go on a little bit where yeah. i would want to experience at least once right not with shrek right don't need so to. Good point. And I, I know people are going to say, oh, you guys are like, you know, because Shrek makes fun of Disney. You're not, you oh, guys don't it? like Shrek. Yeah, the whole point of Shrek is to make fun of Disney. Okay. Like, I mean, there are so many jabs at Disney in Shrek 1 and all of them. See, I haven't really watched it recently, though. I just. I, I tried watching it with trying Harrison. To be I tried watching it with Harrison, and I just. I just See, like. I didn't I enjoy it. To me, I don't mind if someone makes jabs at Disney. It's. That's totally fine. Right. I, so, it's more about how well it's done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yes, I think that's a key. I don't know. I just... It, it's just not my type of, you know... It's not your cup of tea. Humor. I mean, there were it's some parts that were funny, but yeah. Right. Yeah. So, okay. To each their own. And exactly. Some people absolutely adore Shrek, and, and this is like part of their every trip, which we get. Totally. Um... So yeah, Shrek to me as well is not great. This the the show is like got lots of like you know effects in it, um, you know like l- very similar to like it's a Bug's Life or okay. Honey We Shrunk the Audience and gotcha. stuff like that. Um, okay, then there's Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, which is again um, this one I think is a little bit more like it moves more like I think it's sort of a semi simulator type of thing. Okay. With the minions, um, like Spider Man, or no? It's sort of like that. It, it I think this this used to be the Hanna Barbera like experience where there was all these Yogi and Flintstones and okay all of them like together and you went through this like big. It was like the whole theater kind of like rumbles and moves and with the this, this screen. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's not like a huge gimbal, I guess, is, you know, I guess is what you could call it. Um, and, you know, it's... It, what's cool about it is the... they I like that where this is, they built Gru's house. Right. That's cool. Yes, it is cool. Like, that's... Harrison immediately will... Take mm-hmm. to that. Yes. You know, he will really like that. 
What do you think of the Despicable Me franchise? I like it. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do like it. I like two the most. I think I like yes. Despicable Me two the um, most. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, I've never I seen three. Did you see three? I have seen three. I don't. It's not the strongest. Okay. It, but I mean, it's stronger than other like third movies I've seen. So I mean, it's not horrible. Okay. I would say it's good. I think Minions is cute. I like the actual. I like Minions. I mean, I I think it's solid. Okay. All right. So, uh, Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem. Um, you know, from it's very from what I hear. It's very like um, sensory overload. Okay. Um, Interesting. That's what people say. All right. Um, so, so it's weird. You you start out in the in the park and you are met with two shows immediately, like you know big theater shows, which I guess makes sense considering you're at Universal Studios, you know. So and they're based on movie franchises. Which does fit, and mm-hmm. they're all Universal film franchise. Well, DreamWorks, but I think DreamWorks is now owned by Universal. So, um, all right, and then um, Transformers: The Ride 3D. I like Transformers. Yeah, never done the ride. The ride is very. We've talked about this, I think, in another uh, podcast. It's very similar to Spider Man. Okay. Except the all spark is you know missing or whatever, and they've got a you know Megatron gets it, and it's fun. I okay. mean, I think it's definitely cool. Like, yeah, I, I would be. I, int- I think I if you like Spider Man, yeah. you'll like it. And the one cool thing about this area is the awesome Transformer like walk around guys. Right. Yeah. I mean, those are incredible. Very cool. Like, yeah, what it, you know, Universal really nailed that. They like, did. Those Transformers are neat. You know, like when you see them in the park, it's cool to take pictures of them, you know, but it is weird to me. So this is where we start getting into the weeds, okay, Okay. with Universal Studios Florida, which I guess from the very beginning, there were licensed, you know, properties, but this is definitely one of those licensed properties with Transformers. Paramount owns the film rights to transformers right so really they're you're getting like a a loan of a paramount franchise in a universal studios park right which is weird to me it is you know but but i guess i get it i mean Mm -hmm. you know they i think universal's idea was to you know get popular film franchises make a attraction out of them right and and just go from there right so um transformers movies are fun i mean i mean none of them are terrible i mean it's what i guess what do you what are you expecting <laughs> you know i guess you gotta think about that yeah like what are you expecting from transformers movies i don't know um okay and then the last one in this area, and then we'll move into the next area. The last ride in this area is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Ash has not been on it. She wants to go on it. Um, I have been on it. This is one of my least favorite attractions. <sighs> period. It's just period. Ever. Yeah. Of all and time. shout out to another you know, podcaster, vlogger, um, theme park history. Yes. Has a great video about this ride, mm-hmm. which I think everybody should go check him out on YouTube, theme yeah. park history. Yeah. Really great content. We should reach out to him um, or them. I don't know if there's multiple of them. Um, and, you know, the, the weird thing about Rip Ride Rocket to me is it is totally completely random. Like, I guess they're calling it Hollywood Rip Hollywood. I guess that fits with studios. Just the name. But I just, I don't like the actual ride. Like, it's not fun. Yeah. Like, it's the ride. It's one of those coasters that, like, you, it's not enjoyable. Like, remember when we went on um, Goliath? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that? Yeah. Six Flags, Great America. Has all these, you know, cool things yeah, that they Goliath. advertise, but it was not comfortable at all. No. That's what Rip Ride Rocket's like. It's just discomfort yes, it's kind discomfort. of. it's discomfort. 
Yeah, and then right. it's just sort of covered by you can pick your song. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I think it's just Hollywood rip ride suck it. It's that, that bad. It's that bad. I really dislike like it. Suck and it, like David Wallace's company? Right, David Wallace's company. You're absolutely right from the suck office. Suck it. Yeah, suck it. <laughs> um, so, and Degeneration X. Uh, so, so you. what else I don't like about Ash? Tell me. Is the track is all over the damn place. It's like it is. all I mean, they over just the park. Squeezed it in. It's just like Everywhere. ruins the the theming. You see, like the belief. back part of it, like way back at that one entrance, right? Like, so way when you're back at HHN, there. a big the big sound stage where they yes. have like poltergeist was. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! And then gosh. it just stretches back over, and there's like this wall. I'm doing air quotes that it breaks through. That's just like this random wall. Right. It's just. That, I mean, Universal does a lot of... They, listen, they just, from from what people are saying, Velocicoaster is the best thrill coaster, like, of all time. So, that's great. They've since fixed the issue. I wish they would just take this guy down. Let's I mean, just, do something themed. Let's just do get rid cool. of it. Let's just get rid right? of it. Right? Hagrid's was a win. Velocicoaster's a win. Do something there that, you know... Right. would be better, which would be almost would, anything. Yeah, maybe tear it down and just redo it. Or just tear it down. Just get rid of it. Right. Maybe you and I could have like a little podcast Petition. station over there. Petition. Hollywood rip, we ride, suck We could be hired it. and be famous I universal don't, people. I'll be honest. I know no one. And we have a lot. Our, my Our group of friends are big time universal people. Mm -hmm. None of them. I don't know any of them that say they like love Hollywood Rip Right Rocket. I don't. No, they nobody. really just do it if there's not really a wait. Right, like five minutes, I'll just go on it. Right, it's it's not a like particularly sought out attraction. Well, and I think aside from Hagrid's and now Velocicoaster, it's like the one coaster, right? In that area, right? Yeah, yeah. in that so part. So it was like you know the well, real mummy. right. Mummy. Oh yeah, no. Mummy's way better. Mummy's a coaster. It I is. Think. It is. So you're right. I think you could definitely call it a coaster. No, you're right. I forgot yeah. about that. Okay. So yeah, I get. I just. I don't I like. I think people just go on it because it's there. I don't like looking at it. I guess it's sort of cool at night with the lights. You know that like streaky lights thing that they have on the on the trains. But other than that, like mm -hmm. just. I'm yeah. sure it'll, the the time I do it will be the time. And that's yeah, probably, I, I'll, I don't know how much longer they're going to keep it going. Oh, you think that, that... I know they've had, like, issues, right? It's shut down a few times. Yeah, I, I'm not convinced that they want to keep it open. But, I, I mean, I don't know how much the capacity it really sucks up either. Because those trains aren't... Sure, short. Really, there's only two, like, connecting things. And I think it's, like, two or three rows of two. Right. It's, like, literally 12 people all together on each... Train. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's it. It is. It is it. So, eh, I don't know. So what if else? the line's only five minutes, no one's going on it. Literally no one. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, literally. That's that's just... So, I know, I I guess we've we've talked ad nauseum, I guess, right now about how much it's not great. Uh, but what else I don't like about it, too, is that, like, that initial launch going up. You're just I mean it's straight literally straight up. up. Like you're just you just feel the weight of gravity and then it's just it's not pleasant. Okay. Not not pleasant. You know what I will say though, at least the headrest goes up that high. That other roller coaster we were on, there was literally no headrest behind us. So when we were going up the thing that was like straight up the hill, you had to hold right. up your own head, which sounds like yeah. it'd be easy to do, but it was a lot of neck work. Yeah. And you've got a long neck. I do. So for you, the lever is long. Yeah, for you is that's a legit it issue. A, it was a chore. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> well, um, your head is giant. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> so, uh, production central, kind of neat. You know, it, I mean, in some ways, uh, it used to have. Oh no, no, no! It's not. That's not correct. Um, <laughs> Because, like, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket is, like, pretty far in, and then, you know, and then you get to New York. So this is the next area is New York, 
Right. And what you find in New York, Ash, is some of our faves. Okay, in the New York section, which I think out of out of all of the themed areas in Universal Studios Florida that are originally there, obviously we're going to separate Diagon Alley for now because that, of course, I think it's wins thing. everything. Right? It's amazing. Mm-hmm. But New York, I think, is the next best. Like as far as theming, I need to, yeah. What what's in there? I need um, a little so New York has raced through you, Nor- New York, New <laughs> York, starring Jimmy Fallon. Okay, I've never done that either. Which everyone dislikes, uh, but this was the first air, uh, type of ride where they tried to do the cueless, like a cueless ride. And how did that go? I guess it. It's sort of cool. People just kind of wait around in like a waiting area. And I mean, you're still waiting. It's still a queue. <laughs> but, you know, but you're like in this area with the Tonight Show memorabilia all around. Okay. Well, I mean, you know. Which is cool. It's a, it's an attempt to do something different, you know. And I guess Jimmy Fallon does give it his all, trying to make it fun, you know. But it's well, a, I like him. It's another screen simulator, right? That's, uh, where yeah. you're just kind of racing around new york i guess so um and then of course we have our fave of this park or maybe not i don't know revenge of the mummy oh yeah yeah definitely awesome mummy's great it is uh well we're gonna go back to that in a minute and then we got the blues brothers show that happens on the street on new york in new york um dining shopping areas this is where uh they had our favorite scare zone the 80s oh yeah yeah um where they would do the thriller so dance at hhn the last couple times hhn 2018 yeah has ruined basically how i feel about hhn because it was so good it was really it was kinda, good yeah it was the 80s themed it had um it was the Stranger first year Things. they really did it, was it. Yeah. so good it was so good really well done um all right okay so um I'm not going to talk too much about Race Through New York, except, Ash, this is going to make you real sad. Mm. Okay? What? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, do a little quiz for you, a pop quiz. It used to be this attraction. You ready? Oh, no. It's already here. What Wait, movie why is do that I not from? Know what that is? It's already here. What's that from? Why can I not what think movie? Of what it is? What movie? I don't know. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can give you. I feel like I know that, let me give but you I just another can't. Line. It's just too. My brain is. Oh, okay, let me give you the. Give me. I'll give you one of the actors. Why, why? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe. That's in the movie. Okay. Philip Seymour Hoffman is in the movie. If you need another lifeline, let me know. So you've had. It's already here. Okay, I don't. I don't. I mean, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Just, just and Helen Hunt. I don't know. Bill Paxton. <gasps> oh Come, on! Come on! Come <laughs> on! Twister. Twister! I don't know why it's I put it. Here. Oh, how did I not get that? I'm so excited. It's already myself. here. All Love right, guys. Twister is Humans being. ridiculous and amazing. It is. All right. So, Twister, a huge hit for Universal. Totally took everybody by surprise, too. Like, I don't think Universal was expecting twister to be as popular as it was but it came out in the mid 90s my god and for that summer it was a big big time i remember when it came out it came out memorial day weekend i think um of the year it came out which is what 95 94 something like that i think maybe 95 um and bill paxton rest in peace and and helen hunt and Philip Seymour, great cast of people, of really good actors. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's just a fun, you know, it was a fun movie. I mean, we just watched it not that long ago. Right. I we mean, it's just, just laughing. It's, it was yeah, great. it's cheesy. It's, it's fun. It's entertaining. It's entertainment. It's summer blockbuster entertainment. Yep. Um, and there used to be, we're raised through New York. New York. Why can't I say <laughs> that? New York? What is wrong with me? Okay. What is wrong with me? I couldn't get that. What is wrong it's with already me? here. Because that's uh, like my favorite line so, of the whole movie. So, I'm embarrassed. Do you remember going in? Did, have you been? Do you remember going into Twister? No, no. The experience? Nope. Okay. So there was Twister, 
the experience, right? Where you waited in line and then you basically went into a sound stage and a legit kind of like earthquake where the whole thing like, you know, there's special effects on display, really. And a huge twister is actually formed on the stage. And you're in the you're basically standing. It's this walk. It's a standing attraction. You just walk in. There's a couple rows of people, and you're just looking at the stage. And a twister comes in and just wipes it out. Oh, cool! And it wipes out the whole stage. And like the sign falls. Like they, it's this the scene where they're watching The Shining. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that whole scene is recreated in Twister. You know. Cool. The experience, yeah. So, was it well received? Was this something that people liked? I, people liked it. I think people did really like it. I liked it. It also was a great place to like go cool off. Mm. They literally would just blow uh, cool air at you because Twister. Right. Right. So you're experiencing a big storm, a tornado. It's so it was really neat. And then of course you walked out into the Twister store. And there were cows. They sold the cows. Huh, there was funny. a bunch of cow merchandise everywhere. Interesting. Which was fun. Yeah. Right? Because of the cow spinning around the, the Twister. Flying. So, uh, So rest in peace, Twister. Another great attraction and universal property. Mm-hmm. Gone from the park. <laughs> All right. And then Revenge of the Mummy. What do we think about it? We've Can talked about it before. Yeah, sure. Sorry. sure. Sorry. Yeah, Revenge of the Mummy took the place of Confrontation, uh, which, of course, you know, I, you know, of course, have a very strong nostalgia for because my grandfather and my grandmother introduced me to King Kong. So I just love King Kong. I'm glad he's back over in Islands. Yes. So I'm glad he's not completely gone. Okay. True. Uh, but he was there in his full 30 foot glory. Um, you know, for many, many years, right? In nine, from like the beginning of the park to, I think it was there for maybe 10, 10 or so years, um, maybe a little less. Uh, so it was very impressive, very impressive. Well, just go check out Confrontation on, on YouTube, everybody. Um, so Revenge of the Mummy comes in, Ash. This is probably... What are Universal's absolute best? Oh, yeah. What do you think? I completely agree. Um, I was very excited to go on it for the first time, and it's still over-delivered, I felt yeah. like. Um, it's, you know... It's so fun. It is. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah. And because of the nature of the kind of ride it is, it, it tends to be a little bit more... You know, it's harder to like memorize if that makes sense. Yeah, like, it's a great yeah. experience every time you go on it. Yeah. It's just, it's just great. It's thrilling. It's fun. It's, it's. It's um, really a cool combo it of is. a dark ride, like yep. dinosaur almost, and a and a coaster. Right. This isn't just like straight up Space Mountain or just like. So it's not just just a roller coaster, and it's not. It's just also like in a the, slow the dark. dark right. Ride. It's, it's a it's, combination. Yeah, and it's it kind of it. It surprises you. It's incredibly well designed. Very much so. And you know, I don't. I, I'm. I don't think. No, I don't know. But I really think this one is is maybe a classic that Universal is just willing to keep because it's I so, hope so good. It is so good. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's you know, you're going into the Museum of Natural History. I you know, I think like that's where the stuff is. Um, it's just well done. The The line cue itself is really neat, yep. right? Because you could do those things where you press the button and it shoots air yeah. out at people. You can see a camera. Yeah. And you're seeing what you're doing to people yeah. further up in the line in the queue, like all the curses of everything. Mm-hmm. So that is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's just everything about the mummy. The, the mummy is like... And I, this, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. But it's like super well themed. Yep. It feels different from Rip Ride Rocket and, oh, yeah. and those other things. Like it feels very different. Like it's got a very um, theme park uh, 
way about it. Like it's highly detailed. Mm-hmm. And then you got the Anubis statue that's like crumbling, like like falling into the area that it's in. It's like held up by ropes. Right. You get closer. Um, lots of cool Egyptian artifacts and hieroglyphics everywhere, and the, the kind of creepy music. Um, and you know, obviously, this is based off the Stephen Summers, um, Brendan Fraser, Rachel Weisz, uh, you know, mummy movies. Mm-hmm. So that, that's that's kind of where you're coming from. So you kind of have some context. Is this right. is more of a B movie take, right, yeah. yes. on the mummy? Like yes. it's sort of just a fun B movie role uh, of the mummy, but a great B movie. But a great, yeah, but really fun special effects driven. Entertainment. Yeah. And you know what? I just, I mean, like, I'm remembering things as we're talking. Like, sometimes the track is moving, and you're supposed to know it's moving, but yeah. there's also things around you that are happening, like fire and other things, yeah. and you have no idea what's about to happen. Are you going to shoot forwards or backwards? Because right. you're right. in the dark, and the coaster does all sorts of things. So yeah. it's like, you know, it's it's just a great it, it, right. it is. It, and it's also, I love the tongue-in-cheek type approach to it as well. Um, like it, it, like the guy that gets the, the tourist who the mummy gets, mm-hmm. you know, like when you're in that first room. Right. You know, and the, so you see the mummies, like <laughs> the mummy come out of the sarcophagus. And he's like, your soul is mine. He grabs the, the tourist with the universal hat on. Right. And it just, every, all hell breaks loose and. You know, not even the Magi can save you now. You know, like, it's just so much fun. It is. And then it is, there's even a launch in it, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, there's I mean, a like launch. There's a couple kind of launches, actually. about that ride was, you know, you guys were all really excited. It was the first time I was going on it. And yeah. it was just, you know, high reviews from everyone. And you know how that can be yeah. when, when that happens. Sometimes it doesn't deliver. But yeah. it was just so good. And it... You know, a yeah. lot of things that I just didn't expect yes. happened on that ride. Yeah. So great music. Yeah, some cool unexpected things. No spoilers for people who've never one been spoiler. On it. Um, it doesn't have black sheets, but still delivered. It's t- yeah, no black sheets. <laughs> <laughs> or yes. neon dino heads, right, as far as right. I can tell. Yes. And I love the music at the end from Mummy Returns and the Brendan Fraser gag. That they have yeah. at the end, mm-hmm. you know, and so it's just really, it's like I honestly, it's one of those rides where I could just stay on it, mm-hmm. like I love it that much. And it's, I mean, it's intense. It is kicks your butt. You know what? And I knew but that it's really. the second time we went on it, and I was like, I forgot how intense that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so so great, really good. Um, yeah, so. That's, you know, wow. So we obviously, Ash and I both give that, you know, tens. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm guessing we're giving mm-hmm. it A's and tens. And, yes, A's yeah. and A's and tens. A's and tens. Sorry. Wait, just, What's happening? It's just, there's, it's it's my notifications are set to just repeat until I clear it. Um, <laughs> so, so that's what, that's what's happening. Okay. Um, and then, um, so we also have the Blues Brothers show, Finnegan's Restaurant in New York. Um, Blues Brothers show is really cool. Obviously, you know, I'm from Chicago, so that's where the Blues Brothers was filmed. And I like that they actually still have the Bluesmobile actually drives down the street. And mm-hmm. I mean, that's cool. I hope they, you know, that's something also I hope they don't get rid of, you know, because people probably a lot of kids don't have any idea. You know who the Blues Brothers are. Yeah, they have to be educated in some way, right? Or their parents. I mean, just like over or... at Hollywood Studios, a lot of kids don't know who Aerosmith is. Right, right. And they don't. So, so it's good. I like that they have that. The show is really fun, and it's a fun dance party out on the street in New York. Um, Finnegan's is cool. It's a great. It's a good Irish pub. It's solid food. It's a sit-down restaurant. One of the very few. I mean, there's not that many. Right really, inside in of, the parks yeah. themselves. Um, so Finnegan's I really like. Also, it's a bar, full service bar, which a lot of people like. A lot of people like because if we we went back there, one of our HHN trips between every single house. Yes, which we're not I tell we cannot do that again. That was just well. Ridiculous. I mean, we can't tell them they can't. Do yeah, it. I'm not. We doing, don't have to do it. I'm not doing. 
Um, so, but yeah, Finnegan's is really fun. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really cool things about New York. I think it's a very well detailed, uh, section of the park. I, I do enjoy it. Um, so, so there you go. So that's good for now, Ash, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Well, we can cover more stuff. If we missed anything in New York, we will touch upon it uh, uh, when we get back to Universal Studios, Florida. Sounds good. Um, but uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, please rate and review us again on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Deezer, wherever you guys listen to the podcast. We would really appreciate it if you could rate it. Also, Check out the Bandcap exclusive stuff. Lots of extra content for you guys mm-hmm. behind a very minimal paywall of just $3. Yep. Which is a month. really not that much for 30 to 31 days of awesomeness and Indeed. one month of 28, sometimes 29. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, from the Midwest, see you later.